I was trying to start the video all clean, but I'm all covered of oil. And this is was my band tubing press that use uh, hydraulic hydraulic creek press uh, like this one. This is a five ton creek, and I always wonder how this works. It's like magic, magic. How it's possible that I can apply five tons of pressure just using one finger? And it's crucial for me understanding how it works because I have to uh, fix one that is much bigger. So this will be the perfect caveat for opening it and see inside how it works and all the components. So let's get started, but first, intro! This car jack has a very, very short life. I mean, I only use it a couple times to just <laughs> fix my car. And unfortunately, I didn't know this until now, but there's a little screw valve here on the side. And this screw valve is so important to release the pressure that is inside the car jack. You can imagine how much pressure there is inside this car jack once we start to lift up a very, very, very heavy car. And this little screw valve reduce and let the oil flow inside in a very strange way. We, we will later understand how and this reduces the pressure and the car jack can go down back. So right now, even if I put new oil inside, there's this little hole on the side for pouring new oil inside, it's not working. And it's unbelievable for me because usually I fix everything, but this time it's not, com it's not going up. I mean, it's going up so slowly and I cannot have pressure. I mean, I can feel like 50 kilos of pressure, but not five tons of pressure. So there's an issue inside. Uh, probably there's an air bubble that went inside the system. It's trapped inside and air bubbles for hydraulic system are terrible. It's like injecting in my veins, in my blood system, uh, air. <laughs> you can imagine how dangerous it could be for my heart, my brain and everything. This is the same reason it's so dangerous for hydraulic system. The oil has to be compressed by this little pump that is on the side but oil and air compress with different characteristics. You can imagine that the air has much more compression. It, you can imagine it like a, a spring, an air bubble that can be squeezed and get smaller and smaller. And this is terrible because this reduces a lot <laughs> the performance of a car jack. If there's air inside, the pressure gets lower and lower and lower. That's the main reason why it's so important and crucial, I would say, to remove all the air bubbles that are trapped inside the tubes once you start to change the oil from your car brakes or from your motorcycle brakes. You have to re remove and let all the air bubbles go away, go away, otherwise your car, your motorcycle will not break anymore, will not stop. So let's start to open it and see where can I put my hands to fix it and learn the next time that this happens where the air went and how all this system works. So let me take, uh, let me take this, let me show you. see all the all the cuts and the channel that pass from this that is the oil reservoir into the oil pump that is this little one you can clearly see the movement of the pump that is pushing the oil it's sucking oil from the oil reservoir and pushing it inside the big piston over here to make things clearly I just draw here on this whiteboard how this works. Basically we have the green component that is the oil inside the, the, the jack and you can see that there is the big piston over here, the small pump on the side that is this one and there are some 
channels and some passes so that the oil can pass freely between the oil reservoir into the pump and from the pump into the big piston. Now it's so interesting to understand how this works and basically it works exactly the same way as pulleys and parkours. You already know how it works. The more pulleys you put, the harder you can pull up and lift things. But there's something very interesting to notice. If we have, for example, a rope in our hands and we start to pull pulleys to lift maybe a car, I can pull like five meters of rope with my hand, but the car lifts only five centimeters on the other side. This works exactly the same way. We don't have pulleys, we have oil and we have surface of contact between the small piston of the pump and the big piston of the car jack that is lifting the car up. Basically it works the same. And remember this thing, remember the rope I have in my hand that I can pull meters of it and I have only five centimeters of lifting force on the other side. But we can clearly see this in a clear example. This is an experiment you can make at home. Just take some syringe with two different dimensions, a small one and a big one. And if you push fluid inside the tube, you can see that with a small syringe, we have a lot of travel. And with a small and with a bigger one, we have a very, very short travel, but a lot of force. This is, is exactly the same thing as I was telling you with the rope and the car lift. This is, is the, the, the reason why it works. But the best way to understand everything is to calculate it. And I have here my caliber and I can start to take the dimension of the air piston, the pump piston here and this piston measure only one centimeter and we can do the same here the same thing here also on the big piston that lift the car but this one for example it measure five centimeters so we have a ratio of one to five so let's write it over here we have one to five ratio but this isn't the perfect formula to calculate the force it can exercise this car jack doesn't really mean that if i put one kilo of force on this pump i have five kilos lifting up this other side this isn't the formula to calculate it the formula to calculate this is measuring the area that is in contact with the fluid for example if you think about syringe we have to calculate the area the surface area that is in contact with the black rubber part so here the the, the formula is pretty simple we have pi greco i don't know how you call it in english that multiplies the half of diameter squared. So for example here the diameter of the half the half of diameter is 0.5 at squared that multiplies pi greco and the result is about 0.785 something like this. We do the same thing, so it's 2.5 uh, squared that, p, that multiplies p, and we have like 19, 19.63. So we can have like, um, so now to make things easier, we have a ratio that it is about one, one to 25 so which means that if i apply for example 10 kilos of force on the pump here on the side we the result is that we have 250 kilos of force that is lifting up on the other side so we can maybe write it over here we have we can keep it in mind so if i have 10 kilos of force on one side we have 250 kilos on the other side so this is an, a lot but isn't enough for lifting a car for sure so we need to understand also that the pump is mounted in a very interesting way we have a lever force that exercises much more force into the fluid onto the oil and this is thanks to a lever force because one part is missing we, we need a handle a long handle and this is installed over here you can clearly see now that we have a lever force that is exercising more force into the pump no no force is needed from my hand this is so easy to pump and to i can represent it this way so we move it on this side is much easier to represent it we have the base of the car jack we have the structure that holds the the lever in force we have like a point here and we have the little 
pump full of oil over here with a small piston. We can also represent the oil so you have everything in your mind much clearer. And of course we need only to represent the long lever and we can design it something like this. A very long lever. We can think about this for example that is long, I would say like 40 centimeters. So from the beginning, from here to here is like 38 centimeters and from the piston of the small pump to the welded part on the frame is only two centimeters. So we have a ratio that is around one to 20, I would say, to make things much easier to learn. So it's one to 20 ratio from the lever, and uh, which means that if I apply, for example, only 10 kilos on the lever and I'm starting to pump the oil using only 10 kilos from the end of the lever, we ended up to multiply 10 kilos by 20, which means we have 200 kilos of force that is applied into the oil that is going inside the small pump. But remember, we have to multiply the force that we are applying into the oil by the ratio of the surface area of the small pump into the big piston, which was one to 25. So basically we have to multiply 200 by 25. And the result is amazing because it's exactly what was written on the label of the car jack. We have 500 kilos. So are five tons, and this is the force we can apply to lift the car just using 10 kilos of our hands. So it's incredible that we can multiply so much the force, but this basically mathematically shows how everything works. So, wow, <laughs> it's so strange to see mathematically that everything is represented properly in uh, this way. 10 kilos of force is, a, is almost nothing and it's something that basically I can push with my, in my real life using this car jack. Unfortunately, this car jack broke because there is a very interesting component over here. You can see that here inside the channels of the oil passage between the oil reservoir, is this big component, there is like a hole here on, on the downside part where oil gets sucked from the pump and the pump start to push the oil into the big piston. But just watch these blue components. These are two check valves. This lets the oil flow only in one direction and stop it from coming backwards. This is very important because if we start to create force and pressure with a little pump, if there isn't this valve, all the pressure will go back and it will erase all the forces. So these little valves are very important even if they are so small. And the reason why there is this screw valve here on the side, that is the one that broke my car jack, is to keep there the, the spring that holds the, the valve in place. This isn't the first time I'm talking about jack valves. I made one last video when I built my HHO generator and it was so interesting to see that probably I just lost one single stainless steel ball and this is a trash right now. Doesn't work, but now, for now on, for all the rest of my life, I know for sure how to fix these car jacks. It's also very interesting to see in real life that this is a pressure differential and is basically the problem I had a couple years ago when I started to build my underwater scuba uh, room and basically to fill it up with air, the plan was to use this huge pump that usually is used to fill up inflatable boats, but you can imagine how big is the surface in contact, how much force you need to push against, and it was almost impos impossible to push the air inside the the water for eight meters under and the solution was just to change the pump and take one with a smaller uh, diameter so it was much easier to push the air underwater so this is something that you have to also keep in mind when you start to do this kind of project and i hope you enjoyed this video so please leave a thumbs up and i see you next week with a simple tutorial as always see you soon ciao ciao